In the headlines, the Dominica Calypso Association to revisit its system of road march selection after another tie for the title. The Africulture Stilt Walkers wins its third straight adult band of the year title and consumer protection legislation to emphasize greater consumer satisfaction. I am Andrea L.B. with the Channel 5 News, back with the details after this. Thank you for staying with us. Topping the news, for the third consecutive year, the Africulture Stilt Walkers has won the Adult Band of the Year in a competition which posed a challenge to the judging panel. Eden Jim Baptist has that story. Three of the five competing carnival costume bands were disqualified in the Tuesday parade competition, leaving the Africulture Stilt Walkers and Old Time Sick to be judged for the top prizes. The Africulture Stilt Walkers actually made a clean sweep in the Carnival Tuesday competition, also bagging the awards for Adult, King and Queen of the Band. They appeared in a costume concept, Dance a Heartbeat and Experience Dominic Kidu. The Africulture Stilt Walkers beat the odds notwithstanding that its prize money for being judged Band of the Year in 2016 is still caught up in a legal battle between Carnival Corner and Thunderbirds. Its deputy leader, Cassandra Dewhurst, says the band is here to stay. We may look at the underdogs in Carnival among the costume bands, but Boabua has again won the title of Band of the Year for a free time piece, and we are overjoyed and pleased. I mean, the strength and dedication of a passion comes from God Almighty. Um, it is remarked among the band that we should just not be part of it, but who are they to tell us where and where we shouldn't be? Um, we persevered among all the challenges over the last couple of years, and um, Boabwa remains tall as ever. Dewhurst says they have evolved in their showcase of costumes and assures stronger competition next carnival season our focus will not change because we love what we do and i know that they will continue to practice and not even out of the season we always have a trip during the summer and that will go on as planned and um, we're looking forward to 2018 when we'll be celebrating our reunion year. and baba will continue to cause more problems on the road for all other bands and I say that with a lot of confidence really. The other competitors, Hysteria, Mercury and Amnesia costume bands, failed to qualify, according to the chairman of the Dominica Festivals Committee, because they did not join the parade on time. Well, I think the judges had a, a little you know, difficulty, but they decided that the adult band of the year went to Africulture Steel, Steel Walkers. Second place went to Old Time Sick. There was no third place. Adult king of the band went to the agriculture steel workers and the queen of the band as well. The judges decided that they, to give a special prize to the largest costume band, they gave it to Hysteria, and a special prize to the most colorful band, Mercury. Kozlatik has blamed the late costume bands for the gaps in Tuesday's parade. A lot of people have made you know, comments about the, the parade. There was a big gap. And trust me, that was the reason for the gap. Had all the bands been there, we would have just rolled them out one after the other and we would have had no gap. One of the criteria for judging was that we had, we had a dip for all the bands. And everybody had to assemble here for 10 o'clock in the morning. You had to make two rungs within the stipulated time which was from 10 to 2. Although the judges went to 2.30, only two of the bands actually made two wrongs within the stipulated time. So the three costume bands, so some came in at 12 or something, one even came in at 20 past 1. So they did not have time to make the two wrongs, therefore they were disqualified. DFC consultant Val Coffey explained that participating groups were aware of the conditions and stipulations for the competition and had agreed to them. Band number four yeah. had to be pulled up to band number two. Yeah. So that should explain to you, you know, number one was um, for, for what's already in place, and then old time sick, yeah. all is old time sick. Yeah. Um, number two and number three were, were not present, and number five. So we had to pull up band number four 
to make to to city walkers, to, to, yeah. city walkers to go up to go up to and they were there waiting to it because everybody had to come out in time in related news, the San Sauveur Primary School has been judged the best primary school float of the year and the primary school band of the year in the Carnival Monday Parade competition. The winners of the Carnival costume parades will be awarded at a ceremony on March 21st at Fort Young Hotel. A new feature added to the school's costume parade was a primary school t-shirt band category. The best primary school costume band the, the judges awarded the banner of the year for the primary school. It's the San Suve Primary School. Second place, the Pioneer Preparatory School. And the third place, the Roosevelt Douglas School. The children's king of the band went to San Suve Primary School. The children's queen of the band went to the Pioneer Preparatory School. The best primary school in the t-shirt category, judges awarded first place to St. Martin Primary School. Second place is St. Luke's Primary School, and the third place, the Massac Primary School. The judges awarded for the best primary school float of the year went to the San Sauve Primary School, second place to the St. Mary's Primary, and the third place to the Roosevelt Douglas Primary School. Um, for the secondary school, best secondary school float of the year went to the Cassibrew Secondary School, and the second place went to the Goodwill Secondary School. In the Monday Parade competition, the Castle Bruce Negma War was judged the best old mass band with Good Hope Black Devils following in second place and the Kalinago in third place. Meantime, the Dominica Calypso Association will be looking to implement a more accurate counting system for the selection of a Calypso road march. This, as the association has announced yet another tie for the road match title. A tie for the road match title is nothing new though, and this time around it is between the spirit sung by Lady V and the cartoon characters sung by Sai. Public Relations Officer of the Dominica Calypso Association, Davidson, the Observer Victor, says the minimal airplay of Calypsos during the two days of street jump up made it difficult to have a clear cut road match winner. Even though a lot of cultures did not play, but at least the little that played, Sai song and the Lady V song came up more often in all the information that we received. What we got generally is that cultures did not play around the country generally. I really don't know why, because the Calypsos this year they were very good. We had a lot of contending songs. We had um, Dubai delegation, we had Lady V, we had Sai, we had even Daddy Chess that came after the second round. You understand? Victor says going forward, the association will look at implementing a more accurate system to select the Calypso road march and reduce the incidence of ties. It's more or less based in Roseau, but, but, but sometimes when we have a, a situation where we, we need to get all all as much information as possible. When there is not a clear road match, we usually call a few people from the district to ask what is their opinion, what are their views. So although it is concentrated more in Roseau, but we do from time to time get information from the outside. In this year's case, we did that as well too. All right, we get a few views from not much, but we get a few people, a few calls. The road march title is usually determined by the number of calypsos played in Roseau. However, at times, information on calypso airplay is sought from the outer districts as well. We, we don't have a system where we can get the actual number of times a song was played, like how it is done in Trinidad, where you have people clocking in like every time a song for you so you have that way of, of 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 getting the actual amount of times so in the absence of that you find the views that we're getting is what we basically have to work with because you haven't got an actual figure to say okay this one played once or twice more than this one then sometimes it's better it's more reasonable to just tie the road much rather than to give it to one person it's something that we have to look at and try to develop a system. We may have to talk to some of the countries in the Caribbean um, as, as to what are the system, what the system look like and see how we can pattern on it or do something of our own, you know, but we have to try to do something. The $3,000 cash price for Road March will be split equally between Lady V and Sai.
A Martinique-based volunteer group has added one more notch to its belt of regional activities towards achieving its international goal. The Diamale Rivière Throptimist Club of Martinique has made a sizable donation to the Winston Ward or Children's Ward of the Princess Margaret Hospital. This Throptimist Club is part of a global volunteer movement working together to transform the lives of women and girls. The donated items consisted of 25 cartons of toys, 13 hygiene kits for mothers, three wheelchairs and crutches, as well as clothes for toddlers. The Ministry of Health is looking forward to developing a closer relationship with the Soroptimist Club of Martinique. So on behalf of the government and the people of Dominica, the Ministry of Health and Environment, so we just want to thank you for initiating this um, relation, this project. And as you said in your document, you want to establish that um, relationship, that partnership. And the Princess Mark Hospital is willing to develop that partnership with me. Sir Optimists seek to transform the lives and status of women and girls through education, empowerment and enabling opportunities. Coming up, more charitable giving to the needy organizations and later, debating as a means of conflict resolution. Stay with us. Welcome back. The idea of businesses refusing to provide receipts for goods and services purchased could soon be a thing of the past. The Ministry of Trade is presently refining draft legislation for consumer protection, which will cause businesses to adjust their operations. Plans to address this issue was announced at the launching of Consumer Protection Week on Monday. They will be affected. They would have to make changes that would be in the interests of the consumers who they serve. Um, so, for example, you, you pass around and you see people speak to no refund and uh, no repairs and all those things. Um, those things will become a thing of the past. If the person or, or, or having transactions with no receipts, you know, you have to give receipts, you know. Um, more than even, even that alone, the, the, the business places will have to adjust. And, and those adjustments may not be detrimental to them because all it's really going to do is allow them to be able to deliver a service you know, that is more in keeping with international standards, which we need to do. Meantime, Trade Officer Zarina Matthew says consumers are responsible for deciding whether to purchase goods and services from a business. If a consumer goes to any supermarket, any merchant, and they purchase any item, it is their responsibility to request a receipt. If the vendor does not issue a receipt, then it is, you are, it is your responsibility also to decide whether you are taking the product or leaving it. But it is your responsibility to request a receipt and ensure that. A $7,000 donation to organizations caring for the less fortunate has provided some insight into some of the work done here by the St. George Lodge. Lodge members or masons gathered on Tuesday to present checks to representatives of several homes to assist them in meeting the needs of those who depend on them for daily sustenance. The organizations included the Diabetes Association, Cancer Society, Operation Youthquake and Maho Home for the Aged. The other recipients were REACH, Council on Aging, Chances, Methodist Meals on Wheels, The Grotto, Passes, the Infirmary, Portsmouth Home for the Aged, and the Alpha Center. Uh, St. George Lodge is a fraternity that's been in existence for the last 107 years. A lot of people might not be aware of that, but we'd like to, one of our tenants is charity, which we do, but we, we'd like to know the people we give it to sometimes. And we're going to be giving in excess of just about $7,500 to the various organizations that we hope we can offset some part of your operations in some meaningful little way or some small way. I want to say I'm how happy I am on behalf of Passes too 
uh, and the parents advocating for the inclusion of children with disability in society. Of course, the um, organization just started, opened the facility in July. And we've been having some challenges and of course the uh, subvention here today or the financial contribution from the St. George's Lodge will go a long way in assisting us, of course. Grotto caters to 40 residents, providing them with three hot meals daily and a soup kitchen. And the Dominica State College lecturer, Trudy Christian, believes debates can be used as a way to resolve conflicts. As advisor to the Literary and Debating Society, she led a team that recently won the inaugural Winwood Islands Debating Competition among community colleges. That's what debating is about. Debating is about bringing forth evidence, showing the strengths of your points, and of course the weaknesses of your opponent's points, and therefore, at the end of it, agreeing even to disagree. So debating is really very necessary as, as where that is concerned. College students who formed a part of the debating team agree. Yes, I do, because at the end of the day, everybody learns to agree to disagree on different issues, because I understand we see things differently, but you get to agree to disagree. Oh, definitely, yes, because I mean, we come from a, a conflict, a environment, conflict, civilization. I think if we debate as a people, like have civil discussion, it, it will um, get us somewhere. Also, Christian believes that debating can be used to promote regional integration as seen through the students' participation at the event in St. Lucia. Yes, of course. So in just getting together and carrying out these type of events, the students have to work together. The students that were at the Winwood Islands debate, they already exchanged contact information. They have a WhatsApp group. So right away we can see the region integrating in that way because of the camaraderie that is built with the students who take part in the competitions. So yes, it's a competition, but at the end of the day, they make links, they network. So regional integration will definitely be at the forefront when we debate Leewards versus Winwards, or even an OECS debate, which I had mentioned um, as something to think about in the future. Thanks. That's news. Your sports highlights next with Kenny Williams. First up in sports, the Dominica Football Association will kick off three new competitions in March. On Saturday, the Dominic Women's League will commence with opening addresses from sporting heads and the league sponsor, followed by a grand soccerama at Newtown Playing Field. The winner of the soccerama will receive a cash prize of $700, while the runners-up will get $300. Five teams are expected to participate in two rounds of competition. An added feature this year in the Women's League will be a $100 incentive for the player of each match. The defending champions are New India Assurance Goodwill Runners. Meantime, the Under-15 Boys Zonal League will kick off on Sunday 12th March 2017 with two matches where Central Overcomers will take on Western Youngsters at 2 p.m. in the first match of a doubleheader at the Stock Farm Complex, while at 4 p.m. it will be South Stars United versus North Strikers. The Under-15 Boys Zonal Competition was launched earlier this year with a soccer rama at Windsor Park Sports Stadium where North Strikers won on penalty kicks. And the DFA Sports Division Secondary Schools Girls League will begin on Monday. In related sports, disciplinary action has been handed down to two players and one club by the Disciplinary Committee of the Dominica Football Association. Cardi Mills and Marvin Libla of Malta Carib Baffer State Football Club have been given 26 months and 24 months ban respectively for their verbal and physical attack on a match referee during the Division 1 league match between Malta Carib Baffer State Football Club and Trafalgar Football Club played on Friday, 3rd February 2017 at the Newton Plain Field. Further, the two are to attend anger management and counseling sessions for the purpose of rehabilitation. Meantime, the disciplinary committee of the Dominica Football Association has found RIC Kensborough guilty of breaching Article 36, Section 4 of the DFA's revised rules and regulations of 2010. As a result of this breach, and in keeping with Articles 36, Section 4, Subsection 4A, Kensborough 
who was relegated from the Flow Premier League after failing to win a match in two rounds of the 2016-2017 season, will commence the 2017-2018 season in Division 1 with two losses. That is minus six points. Ken's rule was brought before the disciplinary committee after missing three consecutive matches last season in the Flow Premier League without writing to the board of management or giving reasons why they failed to appear for the said matches. Yet there were wins for Piotr Secondary, Casibu Secondary and Dominica Grammar School in action from the Massey Insurance Under-20 Cricket Championships on Tuesday, beginning with the PCSS versus Lead Institute encounter where PCSS won by an innings and 111 runs. The winners took first knock and declared on 159 for five. Sawan Lockhart scored 70 while Jassian Alexander supported with 51. Allington Burnett took four for 57. In reply, Lead was bowled out for 25 runs in 15.5 overs. Jassian Alexander picked up four for three and R. Mayfield two for six. Batting a second time, Lead was again bowled out for a low total to reach 23 in 13 overs. Jassian Alexander picked up five for 10. In another match, CBSS defeated Portsmouth Secondary by five wickets. PSS first at the crease reached 35 with the highest total from a batsman on their team being L. St. Jean's 11. Western Flora bagged four for three. In reply, CBSS was all out for 66. Quan Etienne added 20. Lester Luis took four for nine and Leon St. Jean three for 23. In the second innings, PSS declared on 105 for eight. Shamara Felicite 29 and Anil Sango 19. Western Flora and Kalyan Wilshire took three for 21 each. In reply, CBSS scored 78 for five with 26 from Din Williams and an unbeaten 20. 24 from Voron Elise. Leon Saint Jean took three for 37. Finally, DGS won on first innings points against Goodwill Secondary. DGS declared on a 101 for nine batting first with 23 from Kasim Peltier and 20 from Jovon Mesme. Malakai Xavier bagged five for 25. In reply, GSS was bowled out for 84. Rene Joseph added 25. Kasim Peltier picked up five for 19 and Axel Lamar three for 26. Batting a second time, DGS made 45 for four. Kasim Peltier scored 16. Kim Randelsal took two for 16. In netball, there was one win and a draw in action from the sports division's under-14 netball championships on Tuesday. Convent High School A seems to have benefited from home advantage when they beat Pierre Charles Secondary 14-4. For CHSA, Mia Sylvester scored 10 from 18 attempts, while Shante Hazel got 4 from 10. PCSS lone shooter was Lanisha John Pierre with Four from 12. Meantime, the CHSB versus Northeast Comprehensive B game ended in a 16 all draw. For NECS, we had Nadisha Bellot with 18 and Leandra Africa 5 from 5. Beyonce Francis netted 12 for the home team, while Marelda John supported with 4. Next up, the sports division has named a 16-man squad ahead of the Windward Islands tournament later this year. The squad reads Malachi Revere. Jeremiah Joseph, Majid Peltier, Yawani Regis, Jed Joseph, Savio Ansam, Morel Burton, Neo Davis, Ajanim Tavernier, Clemenson Leblanc, Tyrese Leblanc, Kiran Philip, Miguel Matthew, Reserves Reed, Ashton Ogist, Tinel Nesbitt, and Stefan Pascal. The Windward Islands Under-15 Cricket Tournament is expected to take place in Grenada in April 2017. Finally, the Mao, Masak, and Warner Primary Schools have booked spots in the upcoming round of the National Bank of Dominica Primary Schools Boys Football Championships with wins on Tuesday. Mao finished on top with 15 points. Masak followed with 8 points, while Warner closely trailed with 6. Next up, the Kela Blura Primary with 5 points, Pioneer Preparatory 4, and Salisbury 1 point. That's all the sporting highlights for now. I am Kenny Williams. Join us next time. We could experience showers for the rest of the week. Your weather report is next. Good evening, Dominique, and welcome to tonight's weather broadcast. I'm your presenter, Marshall Alexander. 
We begin by taking a look at earlier visible satellite imagery and what it showed. multi layered clouds across the region today due to the presence of a frontal boundary affecting weather conditions and this resulted in mostly cloudy skies across Dominica during today. Now taking a look at earlier radar imagery and what it indicated, the associated scattered showers across most of the region during today. Tonight's weather is expected to be mostly cloudy and breezy with some scattered showers and similar conditions can be expected into tomorrow. As a result, persons in areas prone to flooding, landslides and falling rocks, you are advised to be vigilant and to exercise caution. Sea conditions are expected to be rough in open water with waves peaking near 12 feet. As a result, a small craft warning and a high surf advisory remains in effect for above normal seas and high winds. Looking ahead to the next three days, Increased cloudiness and scattered showers expected over the next three days. Also, breezy conditions expected. However, by Friday, a relative improvement in conditions can be expected. For the rest of the Caribbean tomorrow, generally cloudy skies with scattered showers can be expected across most of the region during tomorrow. Our international cities forecast clear skies expected in New York and Beijing, partly cloudy skies expected in Miami, cloudy skies expected in London, and some rain expected in. Caracas. Sunrise tomorrow will be at 6.17 a.m. and sunset will be at 6.15 p.m. For more information, you can call the weather hotline at 447-5555 or visit the website at weather.gov.dm. Thanks for viewing. Have a good night. To end the news, the headlines again. The Dominica Calypso Association to revisit its system of road march selection after another tie for the title. The Africulture Stilt Walkers wins its third straight Adult Band of the Year title and consumer protection legislation to emphasize greater consumer satisfaction. Feel free to contact us at news at marpin2k4.com. You can also access our past newscasts on our YouTube channel. On behalf of the entire production team, I am Andrea Louis. And to all our viewers around the world, thank you so much for watching. Join us tomorrow.